This video is basically everything that I could think of that you need to do um, with box forms. You should be able to draw a box already, just a basic simple box where you, sh where you see three sides. If you can't do that, take a step back, take a look at one of the other videos that I've made about it. I made a bunch of them and covered the ideas thoroughly, including using the wireframe method and just drawing the sort of facing sides. So if you need some clarity on that, just take a moment, check those videos out and go from there. Once you can do a basic box, you should be able to do that in different sizes, lengths, widths, and proportions. Um, for this video, we're gonna be basically using two kinds of boxes. One that's more or less a cube and another that's flattened and longish so that you can do different things with each of these proportion boxes. One of the things that you'll notice about boxes is that it's basically triangles. You draw a vertical, you draw triangles that seem to go back in space, you cut the triangles off, and magically you have a box. So as long as you're thinking in terms of basic shapes, verticals, and triangles, you're going to be okay. One of the most important things to be able to do is cut stuff out of a box. So you start by drawing a full box very softly. And the softer you do this, the better. Your construction lines eventually disappear. Then what you can do is estimate where the halfway point is, or any point really, on there, and run your lines in a similar angle to the triangles that you've used to set up the sides of the box. And you'll be able to do things like this, where you cut out stairs. And if you do this enough times, you could create a huge stairway by stacking boxes and, cut and cutting away bits of boxes in order to create something that kind of goes up. You can imagine that you can modify this in a bunch of different ways. One of the other fun things to try out is the two side, three side stack. So the way this works is you're going to draw a box in one point perspective and then a box in two point perspective. If you need perspective review, go check that out and uh, come back to this one. What you're doing here is basically figuring out how to turn a box and have it sit on a similar plane. This one's kind of tricky. It takes a lot of practice. Um, you don't have to be perfect at it though. It just has to kind of convey the idea that one box is sitting on another box and they're rotated against each other. Another thing that you'll need to be able to do is just stack the same size box on top of each other. And one thing to think about is drawing over and drawing through a box so that you know where the bottom of the box is. Another thing you can do is just add on to the bottom without drawing through the form. So it just looks like there's a box on the bottom. Um, it's a pretty simple one again. And this allows you to sort of subdivide forms that are more complicated. If you started doing this and cutting out shapes from these three boxes, you could do some really interesting and really complicated things by breaking it down into a simple form. Another thing to do is just stack boxes of different sizes. And remember as you're stacking, to keep in mind where the back of these boxes are, you don't want to stack such that it would, that you leave out a part of a box or you like put boxes through each other when you don't actually mean to. Another cutout variation is just doing curved corners. Um, the corporate curve is really popular in all kinds of design right now. And it's pretty easy to draw. So you draw a normal box, and then you curve a corner and you do that corner on both sides of the box and you have something that's pretty reasonable. The trick to making it look realistic is to use uh, where the shadow core would be and either draw a couple of faint lines there or use some tone and draw that out. One of the things you can do to make sure your lines go in the correct directions is uh, turn your paper if you're working on a drafting table or something. and That'll help you draw more comfortably. Another thing is um, a triangle corner cutout. This one's super useful for doing all kinds of uh, more complicated things like cars or trucks or whatever. You can imagine that if I stuck another box in the front of this, it would look like, uh, look like a truck. And all you're doing is taking that same angle, putting it on both sides, and then running some lines back to it. 
Uh, this one is kind of fun. This one's going to be useful for drawing uh, things like wood or any kind of um, stuff that's been damaged or potentially a bunch of a bunch of different objects. Um, this one's kind of like the V cut out. So you take a triangle, you draw that on the front side, run lines back, and then echo the angle back so that you get a little bit of overlap. The trick to this one is making sure that the V doesn't continue from that line that goes across the form. Otherwise, um, it'll look flat and, and sort of strange, even though you'll get a little bit of overlapping in the back. Another one that's kind of tricky is the three side box with a hole cut through it. This one, if you're having trouble with, back up and do a full wireframe where you draw the back uh, sides and the bottom of the box so that you can keep track of where the hole sort of ends in space. One of the easiest things you can do is use the the distance of the lines that you constructed the box with uh, going back and pull that into the into the middle of the hole so you kind of trick yourself into thinking that that's like the same sort of thickness the entire way. One of the other things you can do is bump up the line weight of the uh, front plane of that so that it pulls forward in space. Another thing you can do is do a hole cut out, but do that in a two-sided box, meaning one that's done in one point perspective. Uh, this is another good thing to practice. Be useful if you're drawing like a pool or something like that. You, know, you can imagine that this would be the edge of the pool, this would be the top of the pool, and then you cut downwards and you find the water. And you're going to be doing this sort of cut out all the time. And what you kind of estimate here is where that triangle intersects the corners in the front, and then you can kind of touch it up and refine it. What's important is to create the sense of depth, not to nail it exactly. And you can go on top of this with more and more layers and just keep refining. You can use pen to kind of settle on your final line or you use extra line weight. What's important is that you're beginning to think in three dimensions. This one's a tricky one that I just learned from Will Weston, and you kind of do this naturally anyway as you begin doing more and more complicated objects. But this is the um, uh, the peg through the hole. So instead of drawing a hole and then putting uh, nothing inside of it, you put a peg through the hole, and you just run the peg all the way through the object. You can draw through those. Um, through those construction lines, doesn't matter. And then you draw the front, and then you draw the, the back. The trick to that is making sure that the lines don't intersect um, as they go through. Like if you've lined up the corner of the peg and the corner of the box, it's going to kill some of the dimension. And you're always looking to increase dimension and not necessarily decrease it. Um, there may be situations where you would want to decrease it, but not that many. And then as you bump up the line weight, what happens is the construction lines sort of disappear as everything else gets emphasized. Uh, another great one is to be able to do sort of boxes floating on each other. This will help you with perspective drawing especially. Um, and this one's really fun to do. It's really easy. And what you do is you start basically front to back and top to bottom and overlap boxes on top of each other. And you can use basically the same angle as you go down in space. You can vary the size and proportion of the boxes if you want. There's a bunch of ways to vary this and change it up so it's not exactly like what I'm doing. And you can adapt it so it's not boring for you. And I think that's really important when you do any of these form-based exercises that you try the ones that you see and then come up with different variations on your own. You can practice these abstractly. You can get boxes out and stack them up to help you with this. You could take, you could use photographic references, take your own photographic references, anything that you can do to make this more interesting for yourself is a good idea. And once you do that, you can 
change a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of things. You can do a whole bunch of complicated things. The next thing is the two-sided float. This is going to be extremely useful for one and two-point perspective. You could imagine uh, this becoming uh, buildings uh, with levels like a parking garage on top of each other or something. And uh, you can do many, many variations of this. And after this one, this one's really simple. Basically, you're drawing boxes with triangles cut off. The more interesting version, though, is the two-sided perspective float. So what you do is you pretend that you're in, in two-point perspective, and so you, you do a little bit of a triangle on each side of this box, and then you run that same size back in space, so you continue the angle as if there's a line going between them. So it looks like you're running these, these boxes down a perspective grid. And this is basically how you would create things like city streets and so on. You run these back along the same sort of larger triangle, and it becomes uh, a huge and interesting way to create depth. You'll notice that if I continue to line from the top and bottom of all three, it would all kind of continue together. One of the things you want to make sure to do is make sure that each of these sort of triangles that you create sort of points in the same direction. Um, you're not really working with perspective per se, but you're imagining um, what would happen if you did use perspective, and that's, uh, that's important. So come up with your own box variations and have fun with it.